welcome the emergency medicine channel today we are going to discuss about a patient who presented with, to the er with complaints of a uh, penetrating injury to the gluteal region a 44 year old male patient presented to er with a complaint of a penetrating injury to the gluteal region with the uh, by a uh, tree branch and he told that it ended into his anal orifice it happened like 2 hours back Initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious oriented and obeying commands. As airway was patent, uh, there was no pooling of secretions, hoarseness of voice or gurgling. Uh, C-spine uh, was not non-tender. Breathing, his respiratory rate was 18 per minute and saturation was 98% in room air and air entry was bilaterally equal. Circulation, his heart rate was 62 per minute. Blood pressure was 110 over 75 millimeters of mercury. All peripheral pulses were felt equally and bilaterally and there was no active bleeding even from the gluteal region. Okay, so uh, how was the injury? mechanism uh, he was climbing uh, he was on a tree and he was getting down from the tree that time a uh, uh, tree branch ended into its okay. so he fallen down on over it or uh, it wasn't uh, direct injury it was a direct injury okay it was, it was not he is in fallen over a tree branch no, no. it was a direct impact injury yes. okay <coughs> okay, fine. Disability, his GCS was E4, V5, M6, pupils 2.5 millimeter equally reactive. Pain uh, score was 9 by, sorry, uh, 7 by 10. Uh, exposure, his temperature was 90 degree Fahrenheit and hypothermia was prevented by blanket. Okay. Uh, and adjuncts to primary survey, uh, we have placed a large bore IV candle and we have given him 1 gram paracetamol. We also gave him a tetanus toxoid uh, okay. injection. Then uh, we did an ultrasound fast examination. Uh, um, uh, and it was not showing any free fluid in the abdomen. Okay. And uh, we planned on starting an antibiotic also for him because it, he told it was it has entered the NLO. Yeah, so it was an uh, isolated injury to the uh, rectum. Yes. To the anal yeah. region and a penetrating injury uh, <coughs> by a tree. Tree. Okay, branch. branch of a tree and there was no other history, history. there is no other uh, fall pain, or anything there is no that. other fault. So it's a direct impact injury, so airway was patent. So only thing he can have problem with this will be a circulation, but again circulation was maintained with a heart rate of 62 per minute and 110 over 60. So he is not in shock also. Yes. So you only have pain and that uh, penetrating injury right now. Anything sir? Uh, regarding the gluteal region right or left side, <coughs> what was the direction of the force? Uh, he told that uh, he was climbing down that okay. time uh, the thing in which he was standing that tree branch actually broke so okay. he uh, he didn't fall as such but he lost that control so he directly uh, bended a little bit down so that this penetrated it was directly over to the anus yes, was there any center. broken bit uh, of this wood that uh, then, uh, retained inside or any impelled piece was there um, he told that uh, he pulled uh, out after that thing. yes yes sir he actually pulled it out it ended inside and he actually pulled it out sir oh. he told it almost 5 centimeter ended inside and he uh, blood stains were there around about 5 centimeter in that branch right or left gluteal so in the stool center it was in the anus center I, I, exactly in the anus yeah, midline it was in midline. the midline okay. inter cleft yes so, uh, sample history, uh, he is not having any allergies, no other past medications or any past histories or surgical mm. history. Um, last meal was uh, four hours back. Um, this patient present with a uh, penetrating injury to the gluteal region uh, with a broken tree branch when he was climbing down a tree. And a patient removed it by himself and noticed that there was 5 centimeter uh, blood in that tree branch. But there was no history of fall, head injury, a loss of consciousness, vomiting or seizures. Um, then uh, since it was an isolated injury I directly went to the local examination so I, I got the consent from him because we have to examine mm. the private area mm. of that patient then I inspected that area that time there was some uh, uh, blood stains in the intergluteal cleft and there was a 3 into 1 centimeter laceration over the left gluteal region lateral to the anal orifice mm. uh, and on palpation it was depth was around 1 centimeter uh, then uh, that was a final there and uh, the, there was no active, active bleeding, bleeding no from there so uh, when you say about the anal orifice you can tell what clock position position uh, it was around o clock seven o'clock position. position the wound description yes. for legal purpose also we have to be precise yes. 
then uh, just went to uh, check the reflexes of that area uh, superficial uh, we check the uh, bulbo cavernous reflex that was actually present for him and the anal reflex also was present for him uh, because of the pain he, it, lo it was little bit sp spasmodic also. okay uh, then we uh, since it is a gluteal region injury, we will have to uh, assess for the uh, nerve examination also. So, the uh, lower limb muscle power and the uh, peripheral circulation was also assessed. So, all the distal pulses were present and the power of the lower limbs were also normal. So, are you anticipating any nerve injury uh, from the injury what you have described here? Uh, this, it, since it is a central injury, uh, it is unlikely to affect the sciatic nerve. Hmm. Um, so, in this case, we are not suspicious. So, uh, in this patient exactly what we can have is the perianal uh, region, the nerve roots can get affected, maybe but his sphincter tongue is also fine and maybe sensation around the anal region that will not be able to assess at this point of time maybe because of pain, that will be the only thing that will be affected and uh, sphincter tone is fine and other lower limb is much far away, the sciatic nerve is much far away, so unlikely to be injured from the mechanism whatever has happened, but <clears throat> when you have a gluteal region injury uh, you can have different risks that we can discuss later What's yeah. the thickness of the Object. Thickness was, uh, it, he told that it, it was uh, almost the diameter of our finger, mm. index finger. Uh, then, uh, so uh, peripheral pulses were and limb movements were also normal, sir. Um, we, uh, since our initial fast was negative, uh, we didn't uh, plan on any, and he was hemodynamically stable enough. So, if this patient was unstable, then we have to plan for a surgical intervention, emergency surgery consultation and all. But since he is hemodynamically stable, then we had time. So, we did with, uh, we went ahead with a CT abdomen with pelvis with contrast scan. It was to assess the uh, vascularity the and the depth of the injury uh, but it was uh, showing only some mucosal thickening over the left uh, rectal region uh, with some perirectal fat stranding was there but there was no other bowel injuries or anything sir. no rectal bleed or urethral bleed maturation was, is normal maturation was normal then uh, this patient passed urine by himself so that was clear only so we didn't go for any uh, urethroscopy or uh, urethrogram was not planned sir um, then uh, since uh, there was some mucosal thickening and all we did a sigmoidoscopy which was showing uh, nor, uh, uh, rectal and anal canal was normal sir so uh, since he had a laceration of that area this patient was sutured and uh, then he was discharged sir uh, then x-ray pelvis also was taken which was uh, simultaneously with the CT, okay. uh, it was also normal. Okay. Now uh, we can come to the gluteal, this is just a straightforward case, there was nothing much. So uh, when you compare, uh, when you have other injuries, which mm -hmm. are the common sites that will get injured in a gluteal regional injury, what are the different types of injury? You have a penetrating injury, mm -hmm. you can have a direct impact and a fall over that and you can come, the patient can come with hematoma. Mm -hmm. So how will you classify the gluteal region injuries? Uh, uh, gluteal region actually extends from the posterior superior iliac spine to the cleft sir mm -hmm. and uh, laterally it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the uh, greater trochanter so uh, that area if this patient is getting a direct gunshot injury and all uh, sometimes it can go inside and it can form some uh, ricochet formation can be there and that can cause multiple injuries so if it is a gunshot injury it can affect the bowel small bowel can uh, get injured then the colon then the rectum and uh, the blood vessels can also get injured uh, and if it is like a stab injury it can directly affect the arteries or the iliac vessels or the rectum can be affected so uh, when we divide the gluteal region it either it, it can be divided as upper gluteal or lower gluteal so in the upper gluteal comes our nerves and the sciatic nerves are there rectum is there and the major vessels are also there so um, upper rectal injuries are more dangerous whereas lower rectum upper rectal injuries to be more specific whether medial injuries or lateral injuries uh -huh. which is more dangerous um, laterally we have the sciatic nerve and all uh, so, uh, no, medially, medially, medially. medially so that's why we give the IM injections yes, laterally, it, will, laterally. it will give an outer aspect mm -hmm. so it's laterally so medially you have the blood vessel so more chance of injury for the upper medial you have chance for your uh, sciatic okay. nerve injuries and all those things then then uh, lower rectum we have the uh, uh, bladder uh, the lower part of the bladder the bladder neck the urethra the vaginal orifice and the uh, lower rectum prostate and also these are in the lower part so, 
uh, and uh, when we are considering injury to that region we also have to consider regarding the uh, in males and all the anterior part also there can be associated scrotal injuries can be the scrotal condition can be the avulsion injuries okay. can also be there so the, uh, since we have said regarding penetrating injuries either it can be a bullet injury or a direct penetration injury or what we have seen here what else they can have you can have conditions you can have hematoma formation there is a fascia there so that fascia can get uh, infected and also there is a tendon also is available so so, so muscle. tendinitis muscle tendinitis also a possibility so maybe after a fall they will have an initially maybe a hematoma and later on they can have the tendinitis also they can come with some tendinitis also so uh, <clears throat> the most important thing is that ever exactly is the pain uh, is what we have to say it's just not penetrating injuries the gluteal region injuries all together we can have these all classification so we need to be very uh, clear about these things then then we can grade this into grade 1 2 and 3 hmm. so grade 1 means uh, patient is hemodynamically unstable so that patient require emergency surgical intervention grade 2 means this patient is having uh, more than 25 percentage of the tissue loss is there and grade 3 means more than 20 percentage of the total blood loss is, has happened okay. so if this patient is hemodynamically unstable this patient should be uh, taken for a to the okay so uh, what are the injuries that you can anticipate you said sacral uh, sciatic nerve injury then mm. uh, superior gluteal artery can mm. get in then uh, deeper if you can sometimes common iliac also common iliac. It, rarely it can go deeper common iliac also can get affected then. inferior gluteal artery then the um, <laughs> in, in, in you can divide gluteal. into vascular structures mm nervous structures muscle. and muscles bone and bone and as well as the bowel bowel, bowel and other soft tissues mm. bowel which one genitourinary tract, genito -urinary genito -urinary tract. yes so a uh, bowel uh, uh, the colon the uh, rectum and the anals that region will get affected uh, then uh, uh, the um, uh, arteries we have already told then the internal pudendal nerve and the sciatic nerve can also get involved so how will you be able to assess the involvement uh, we can check the ref um, uh, uh, sensations, uh, sensory reflexes can be, superficial reflexes can be checked, sir. Uh, then if the uh, if the major muscles are involved, that can affect the uh, thigh movements and all will be affected. And the nerves can be assessed by the uh, power of the distal muscles and the sensation. Suppose Vascular, then peripheral pulses, if it is a deeper injury, like a common iliac or something, a vessel, uh, peripheral pulses would be weak. The other thing is uh, uh, angle brachial index can be really difficult. Okay. And uh, uh, what are the uh, expected uh, investigation that you need to send uh -huh. for a suspected pelvic injury? For this patient, you have done everything, but you can just say as a workflow. Yes, sir. So, uh, if this patient is coming with a penetrating injury, don't think that it will not affect the abdomen. So, we have to anyway do a UST fast uh, to look for any free fluid. Uh, then, uh, next step is if this patient is unstable to the OT. If this patient is stable, then we have to do a um, CT abdomen with contrast should be there. And if we are suspecting associated other injuries like uh, uh, um, uh, renal injury or urethral injury, we will have to do it uh, along with the urethrogram also. So, that should be done. Uh, Along, if we have a so CT with a contrast with angiography angiogram. is the investigation of choice. Yes. Then, if you have suspecting a bowel or bladder injury or a rectal injury, maybe uh, sigma be also needed to be done. So, <coughs> then, if you are suspecting a bony injury, we uh, might require an X-ray. Uh, X -ray. Uh, that that will be a more easy uh, examination. Exam. And uh, how will you diagnose a tendinitis? Uh, uh, MRI should be done, sir. Uh, MRI, it is more of a clinical diagnosis you can make. Maybe you can do the internal rotation and external rotation, and where exactly is the pain you can see. Maybe an ultrasound initially doesn't show any hematoma, or there is no collection you are ruling out. Maybe you can easily diagnose a tendinitis, depending upon the history and all those things. As you said, MRI can be uh, diagnostic for uh, your gluteal uh, tendon tendinitis. And uh, one most important thing is that the hematoma getting collected there. Whether you wanted to aspirate or not want to aspirate, hematoma. Uh. <coughs> Muscle hematomas. Usually this hematoma will resolve by itself. And you can you just need to observe and uh, maybe some anti-inflammatory agent they will resolve by itself. Only once it is getting infected, you need to drain it. That is a usual concept. If the patient doesn't have any other comorbidities, he's otherwise stable, young, 
there is no other major chance of infection you are not suspecting any major injuries anything else just a superficial hematoma maybe just an ice pack and all other anti-inflammatory like serashopepidase and then sadis will settle that hematoma but unless and until it has become infective the size of the hematoma is increased and the pain is considerably increasing and there is associated fever then definitely you need to drain so usually it's an isolated hematoma we can manage conservatively but if it is getting infected you need to definitely need to drain so uh, that are the expected uh, <coughs> uh, problems with the hematoma what are the complications that you can have after following an uh, injury uh, if at all we are going for a conservative management and if at all some uh, part of the uh, artery has involved so there can be an aneurysm of that part can be there then uh, um, sciatic nerve in you know, small branches might be involved there uh, so uh, that involvement with there then this patient can have a urinary tract infection local area infections can be there uh, then combatment syndrome if at all there is something leaking there uh, tendinitis uh, and obstruction uh, sometimes stricture and all formation later later and in males you can have erectile dysfunction also yes. very rarely <laughs> depending importance can be not erectile dysfunction importance can be one of the reason because of the nerve root involvement so that is the other point that you need to consider sir okay, okay. Uh, uh, so, when a patient comes with a gluteal injury, uh, our consideration would be the hemodynamics. Uh, so, usually it will be an isolated or it can be part of a polytrauma. So, you have to consider the patient like a polytrauma victim, airway, breathing, circulation. The problem that we anticipate is with the circulation. And you have to stabilize, as you said, two large bore IV access, all those things you have started. And... <coughs> when which group of patient you should be shifting immediately to surgery you said hemodynamic instability next will be then uh, if uh, if there is any if we are taking x-ray if there is any air under the diaphragm any bowel injury is there if there is if there is associated injury to the uh, rectum or that area uh, if the uh, scrot peritonitis peritonitis, is peritonitis features of peritonitis usually oh, it will be a combination of an surgery with an endovascular therapy okay. it all depends upon the vessel involvement also so you might need an endovascular treatment along with a definitely surgical so it should be a combination it should be sort of a hybrid uh, sort of a operation data that will be an ideal for this gluteal uh, region injuries depending upon the depth of the injuries and involvement you can decide so the major indication one is hemodynamic compromise and features of peritonitis fast. vascular structures fast positive this all group of patients should be immediately shifted to the operation theater okay <laughs> Anything else that you need And to? then antibiotics also should be given when we are giving gram negative coverage along with anaerobic coverage also. So that is one thing you have to, you have given ceftriaxone or cefiroxime, cefiroxime with metronidazole. Below the diaphragm, so metronidazole will be more than enough. So that is in a nutshell regarding the gluteal uh, injury. Anything else you need to add on? Anything? Anything points, sir? No, if you uh, patient, pregnancy patient, you have to keep it in the mind. Yes, yes. Injury to the uterus or fetus. <coughs> Okay. 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 Thank you.